Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, um, to Straub's Design Podcast. Uh, today it is episode number 31. Um, I am Anne or Anne and I'm, I'm coming to you from Scarborough in Perth, Western Australia. So today is Wednesday, it's the 5th of February 2020. Uh, it is my younger son's birthday and he's turning four, so we've got a very exciting day. Um, but it's also almost six months since my last episode. I know. Um, I really don't know what has happened. I think just life has happened. Um, there's been just general busy life with work and school and all this stuff and um, I also had a dry patch, a drought in my knitting, so a, a couple of months that I didn't really knit much at all. And that actually shows in my statistics for last year because I, um, I just had a look at it. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but I'm just going to tell you that September, November and December last year, I didn't finish any projects. And in October, I finished one beanie. So pretty much the last third of last year, I didn't really knit much at all. Um, yeah, but now we're here. And I've got, um, I've got a full show for you. I've got six finished objects and five uh, works in progress. So um, let's get going. I'll start with some socks that I knitted and finished in August last year. So this was my first ever test knit um, and it was the Daya socks, sorry, <laughs> it was the Daya socks by uh, Sari Nordlund. Um, it is a paid for pattern in Ravelry now and these socks are absolutely beautiful. Okay, I have to warn you, I made this in August and it was still winter in Australia. So I have been wearing these and then they've just been thrown in the drawers and I have not washed them since. So they are very, um, they look like they've been worn and they're quite yucky. <laughs> but I'll try and show them to you so that the sole doesn't show. So these are the Daya socks. So they are these beautiful lace socks. Let me come a bit closer. So this beautiful lace pattern and yeah I just did a fairly short short leg on them. Um, the yarn that I used is the yarn that I can't pronounce in English. <laughs> Let's see. It's the Filcolana Arveta. This one. Um, and it's this exact color, which is color number 187. And this is a fingering weight merino wool. So 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. And I think there's, yeah, well, this is a 50 gram ball. So it's 210 meters and 50 grams. So 420 and 100. So that's what I used. And these socks, um, used 59 grams so one sock let's see how I how I can show them to you so that they don't look as scrubby as they are <laughs> so there and they've been worn lots and as you can see there's quite a bit of pilling um, I haven't serviced these at all I have to um, I have to try and get rid of those pills and then wash them before the winter comes again and um, yeah I loved wearing these socks these are really really nice 
Um, so it was a really great first test knit and I couldn't find anything in the pattern, anything wrong at all. So it was a really breezy te test knit as well. The only problem I had with the pattern was um, trying to find the needles that I get gauge with. Um, I actually, I was a very good girl and I tried a 2.25 mil needle, 2.5 mil needle and 2.75 mil needle. And I ended up going with 2.5 mil needle that the pattern also recommends. Um, but I didn't quite get the gauge. I was off two stitches in the stitch count. The roll count I had correct. So, but yeah, um, these, these are perfect for me. So I've got about a uh, European 38 uh, foot and these are perfect, 59 grams. So yeah, Dea socks, very nice and very pretty. And go and have a look on the Ravelry um, pattern page as well. Uh, Sari's own socks, she made them in a beautiful, beautiful green color. And they are just, they're just stunning as well. Um, so that's that. Then to my second uh, finished object, which is an old one as well. This is a shawl. So this is the Villa Besosi Scots shawl. I probably showed this to you last time. I must have been making this then. Um, but this is a pattern by the Finnish podcast called Villa Besosi So Pirjo Lakkapä and Katri Raunama. And it's a free pattern in Ravelry. Not sure about the languages, at least in Finnish. Um, and this is mine. So the yarns that I used for this is this one here is from uh, a Finnish dyer called Warmy Ones and it's their merino sock in the colorway Snuggle Smuggle. So that's used at the start in this brioche, a little bit there. And that braid and there and then the uh, bind off so I use 75 grams of the pink um, actually here I've got the leftovers here don't I there's the information and warmy ones um, the second color is this Donegal tweed from Casa Gerho Pom Pom. Um, the colorway is called Mintu or Mint. And I used 69 grams. So it's in the brioche, and there, and in the stripes. And the last one, this beautiful colorway, uh, very, very, very pale gray. It, uh, it blows out a little bit. Very pale grey with tiny little grey specks in there. And it is from... My yarn label's a bit grubby, but it's from Ulrike. It's a Finnish um, hand dyer as well. Colourway is called Birch. And it's their Merino Sock Base. 75% superwash Merino and 25% nylon. And this white one I used 84 grams of. So in total, this shawl weighs 227 grams and I knitted it in 3.75 mil needles. And we'll just, I'll just show you how it looks when it's, when it's on. And I really like this shawl. I love the, the lace pattern that, um, that it has. All your fins probably know everything about this shawl already because uh, <laughs> I'm so late to um, to show it to you but um, yeah really pretty lace. And then in the middle uh, there's this um, uh, 
full cable that runs through, which is really nice as well. And then these braids, I had never done anything like that before. Um, they were a bit time con consuming and, um, and that, but I think they're just so pretty. I really like them. So, um, yeah, a little bit of different stuff here everywhere and yeah. And I think the, the colors are quite pretty. They make me think of like grandma's lace or grandma something really like old fashioned. So yeah, I do like this one. Uh, we'll just have to wait for cooler weather, weather so that I can wear it because even now I'm starting to feel way too hot. Um, the last two days we've had temperatures reaching 40 and a bit over. Today is supposed to be a bit cooler so it's possibly 35 only. Um, I've been very happy to be at work <laughs> in the aircon with my cardigan on because it's so freezing. I'm sorry, I'm just looking. Because it looks so weird outside. It's like smoke or rain. But I don't think it's either. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, there's no bad bushfires here in Western Australia. Um, all, the, all the ones that everybody around the world has heard of are in the eastern states. So we've been very lucky that we haven't had to worry about that uh, personally. But yeah, so I won't be wearing this for long because... Yeah, I'm just going to melt. Even the tea is a bit too much. Okay. That is my Villa Peso Siscot shawl. Pretty. And then, uh, more socks. Um, I went to the library quite a while back and I... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I moved you. I um, I borrowed this book called Socks from Norway. I don't have it anymore, obviously, because I've had to return it ages ago. But there was one, one pattern that I wanted to use uh, or to test out, and it was called Larvik Socks. And I had this yarn that I've wanted to use it's really old um, Finnish sock wool thick sock wool um, from Nobita uh, say it's an beliester some stripy color I've made socks from this like 15 years ago and I still have some leftovers so I wanted to use this and then mom sent me some time back she sent me um, Say to my belly is the yarn as well. Um, so I thought that I will combine these two and make some fun socks. And so the yarn is 75% wool and 25% polyamide. It's um, the balls are 150 grams and that has 300 meters. So 200 meters per 100 grams. I would say that is DK weight, but I th I think I might be wrong because I think people say that this is thicker than DK weight. But anyway, that's the meterage. And these socks haven't been haven't been um, finished yet, or the ends haven't been sewn in, but that's what the socks look like. So just very vanilla socks except for the stripes. So um, the stripes are done in pearls and otherwise it's just um, knit. Um, at the bottom I, um, I knitted the stripes as well just so that I don't get these ridges in case they annoy me on the, um, on the sole of my foot. Uh, but at the top I continued the same pearl rolls and the 
yeah it must be that I when I changed the color I knitted the first row and then purl the second row yeah and what do I have in the middle I think I have five rows in the middle of the stripes so that's it um, I, I used uh, 3.5 mil needles for these and I started with 48 stitches um, just a simple simple two by two rib at the top um, and then I did an experiment with these socks so instead of just doing the normal normal toe I decided to customize it so I've um, I've heard these people say that they've um, they don't do the toe um, symmetrical um, so decrease um, as much on both sides but they do it a little bit asymmetrical so that um, it fits your foot and it looks a bit funny but this actually fits my foot perfectly so when I put them on they look really snug and nice um, and I didn't I thought that I started to um, or maybe I had two balls of this colored I can't remember anymore it's such a long time since I made these um, I finished these first of October so it's November December okay so it's four months ago when I finished these. so um, apologies if I can't remember everything what I've done but I thought that I um, these were pretty well matched uh, the stripey yarn um, but at the end you can see that it's not exactly matched but that's all right I don't mind good enough so now what I have to do I just have to weave in the ends and then um, I've got socks for winter uh, 102 grams in total not sure how much of the stripey yarn and how much of the gray but about 100 grams again for a um, European 38 foot and they they smell so sheepy they're just lovely I've actually put some good notes on this label so I I could maybe put on Ravelry how much I used of the dark gray and then it would be easier to figure out the other one so let's see if I if I get inspired I might do that okay finished object number four which is slightly embarrassing because this was supposed to be now if dad's watching he will see what he gets as a present but this was supposed to be his birthday present in September then it was supposed to be Father's Day present in Finland in November and then it was supposed to be Christmas present but then the post office in Finland was on strike and nothing was going in there so I didn't want to send this <laughs> in case it gets lost um, it's been ready for quite a while but I just sold in the two ends that I had or one maybe only one and now it's ready to be posted and I thought that I will film this first and then I will send it off so this is the crenellated hat it's a free pattern on Ravelry um, by Jay Wilson and in, in the last episode I told you about this same hat that I made for my husband's cousin and um, I showed you a couple of pictures of it and this is now the one for dad it's quite a fun pattern um, with this one I because um, the white one that I made um, it became quite snug so then I thought that okay dad won't like a tight beanie like that so I will I'll add some stitches and change my uh, needle size for this brim or that I won't use a smaller needle for the brim I'll just use the same for the whole beanie 
and I started it. I think I, I used four mill needles and I added 24 stitches because the pattern needs um, a certain number of stitches and it became giant. It was, it was giant. <laughs> so then I went down 12 stitches and I still used the four mill needle and now it's, it's a bit loose for me. I, I could wear it, it's a little bit big, but I think it will be perfect for dad. So the yarn I used was this really nice, soft Four Seasons Pure Wool Naturals 8 ply. So there's 250 meters in this 100 gram ball. It is 90% um, superwash wool, 7% acrylic and 3% viscose. Really not woolly at all, this is more merino to me. But even if it was that soft, I made this um, inside of the brim in uh, merino. So for that I used a patterns, I don't have the label for this, but it's the same yarn as this brown. So the uh, patterns baby dreamtime merino four ply and I doubled it up in this blue color that I had leftovers for from um, and I must have had this outside somewhere because I had some grass bits on <laughs> um, yes so that's the beanie and um, the modifications I made for the pattern was that I didn't do as many pattern repeats as in uh, the pattern because that would have been too long so I must have it in one of one of the projects in the notes either in this one or the white one or was it half a pattern repeat that I left off or something and um, the yarns this eight ply the main yarn I used about 58 grams and about 21 grams of the doubled up uh, merino for the inside of the brim. It's nice and doubled up so it's it's also warm and keeps the wind out a little bit better. So that's the hat that can go into the post now for, for dad. Maybe winter's come to Finland now so they need actually, actually need a beanie there because there's been nothing happening. It's been just um, warm and wet, no snow at all. So maybe the timing is right. Then, let me drink a bit. I feel I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rush this. <laughs> Although I, I, have a, um, I have a day off, so all, all I need to do is to make a cake for Mr. Felix for, for tonight. And then, um, yeah, I, I promise to make pizza for dinner, so. That's my other things I need to do today. But this one is, or was, a present for Felix. How, how should I show it? Does this remind anyone of anything? This is my watermelon blanket that I actually started in October 2017. So it's taken me two years and three months to to do this. Not because it's, it was such a big project, but just because I left it and didn't finish it. Um, this is just made out of cheap Four Seasons marble eight ply acrylic, full acrylic. I wanted to make a blanket for the boys that would um, just be super easy care and I wouldn't worry about it if they wrecked it or if it shrunk in the wash or whatever so I just thought I'll just do an acrylic one um, so I, yeah not too much money in it <laughs> and uh, yeah so I made a circle 
I haven't measured it. Let's see what the wingspan is. Maybe that will tell us something. So this is the wingspan. Maybe, would it maybe be 130, 140 something? Let's see if I measure it to myself. Okay. Yeah, maybe 130 or something wingspan. And what I did was just, it's, um, wow, I can't remember the crochet terms now. I can only remember it in Finnish. So I did bulvas. These stitches. <laughs> And just the circle I increased when it looked like it needed to be increased. Uh, so a bit of a trial and error. And um, I think when I picked this up and decided that this is going to be Felix's um, birthday present, I was maybe around here, so I had done this. And then it took me, I think, two nights to finish it off. So um, yeah, I just did, did the red as much as I thought I needed to. I think I finished the ball that I was on at that moment. And then I measured how, how wide, you know, one roll was and then decided to do two red, uh, whites, two light greens and then four dark greens. No, actually five dark green rolls at the at the end to create the watermelon look so I used a five mil needle so it was quite fast to um, to work um, and this weighs 450 grams I haven't weighed separately how much of each color because I don't really care <laughs> but 450 grams and Felix was very very happy with this this morning when he got it he loves blankets he always wants a blanket when he lies down on something so I thought that that was a very um, very good present for him I'm just looking at the crows in our yard we put a little bath for for bees uh, water for bees and some rocks under oh at the bottom of it so the bees won't drown and the crows go there they take baths in that little bucket and they throw the rocks all around our lawn we don't like the cross <laughs> all right last uh, last finished object sorry I'm disappearing I need to reach for them um, this is a stash busting project I had I had bought these bamboo mix yarns from spotlight when they were on special because they were just so nice and soft and pretty and shiny and I never did anything with them so I thought that okay my dishcloths are starting to be smelly the ones that I bought from from the shops and that maybe I should um, knit a few and see how I got so I did and I took my leftovers and I started I found this um, found this pattern, I'm not really a pattern, but um, it was on Yhteishuva, it's a magazine in Finland, their web page, and it's just a simple garter stitch from corner to corner, and that's it. I made six, one is already in use, so I've got five here, and I made two different sizes, so I, um, and I found out that some of these yarns were a bit thicker, as you can see in here, where I've changed. This is a little bit bulkier, but that's all right. It's just going to be a disc cloth. So this size is um, 45 stitches from corner to corner. And then I've got this ugly one. <laughs> I don't like this one at all. Um, this one is fifth. Now actually this is 45 as well but it's made with the thicker yarn but I made another one with the thinner yarn with 50 stitches from corner to corner it was about the same size so that's the difference and then I've got these other ones these are the, the smaller ones 
Um, and yeah, I just took a yarn when it finished, then I continued with another yarn and that's it. Uh, the one that I've been using, I've noticed that because it's, well, it's a garter stitch and it's very stretchy. And when you wet this, it stretches even more. So let's see how they go in the in um, in use. But at least I can now put one in the boys' bathroom because we've just recently moved them into their own bathroom. And there is toothpaste everywhere. <laughs> so I'll I'll chuck a couple of these in there. So maybe they will um maybe they will clean their their mess when it gets too much. Or at least I've got one there if, if I need to do it. It took me a little bit over an hour to make one. So these were super quick, super easy to do while watching TV. And just I just needed something really brainless. Because all the other whips that I had had charts that I needed to follow. So I just needed something that I don't have to look at anything. Um, so these worked well. And um, the six cloths in total weighed 166 grams, and now I'm out of those yarns. Um, and one cloth, they varied from 20 grams to 37 grams each. So depending on, on the size and, and the yarns that I used. So um, that's all my FOs. That is all. Let's go to whips. These are more exciting because I'm still working on them. Okay. Now I have to warn you because in this skull bag lives a very naughty project. It's very rude. So if, um, you don't want to see the F word, then um, yeah, don't look. So I've started to make these mittens quite a while back um, for a friend. And the project is called How Cold Is It Mittens? And it is called as F word. I haven't, well, it's not ready yet because the thumb's missing, so I haven't blocked these. But I'm sure that once I block them, you can um, very clearly read how cold it is. But I love this. I've um, I've favorited the, the pattern a long time ago because I thought these were hilarious. And especially for somebody who actually lives in a cold climate, they would be brilliant. Um, and it's it is a really pretty pattern. This is what the hand looks like. And there's a pretty pattern there as well. Um, the pattern is for two different colors. So this is supposed to be in the same, same color as well. But because of the amount of yarns that I've got, I decided to do this in pink just to make sure that I've got enough. And the yarn that I'm using is Tuku Wool Fingering. In these colors so that's for the white um, uh, white is a uh, color number 01 sake oh actually yeah then the pink is called tate and this blue is hand dyed I got this years ago from a viewer. Now I have to say that I can't remember who, but I got leftover yarns, and I um, I believe this one was hand dyed by possibly Elena from the Villa by the Belly podcast. So it's a nice, beautiful, like a I would say smoky blue, like a grey greyish blue, really pretty. So I've got some left and um, yeah, this is what I've done so far and I need the thumb and then I need to do another one. This went on a break 
for a little bit as well. I don't even know why. Maybe just because I had to, because you have to follow the, the chart all the time for this side. But um, once I picked it up, Gang, it was actually really quick to knit. And I knit this over the summer holidays now, sitting at the side of the skate park when the boys were scooting. And, you know, it was easy enough to do. So that's it. Um, I've used, I think, 2.5 mil needles here. And then when the um, color work starts, I was using 2.75 mil needles. So yeah, that's why that's my naughty rude whip. But yeah, maybe one more one more mitten and then maybe this is a Christmas present for this year. <laughs> um then September this other Finnish podcast uh, started to have a sock along, knit along for socks uh, called Tajunnan Virta Kaksi. Um, and the idea was that she will give like instructions that okay now um, knit stripes for five centimeters or something like that. And everybody could choose their colors and decide what kind of stripes and, and all of this and then create socks. And I thought it was a brilliant idea and I wanted to do that with my leftover sock yarn. And I started and I was doing really well for a long time, but I haven't finished them. So at the end, I don't even know what came that I that I didn't finish them but this is so it started from the top um, I stole that rib idea from somebody off Instagram I thought it was super pretty and then there was some balls and I can't even remember what all of these clues were um, and just just a heel flap and gusset and some stripes it's a bit hard to show you I might have to show you this way and some triangles and then yeah I think I think I must have stopped this because maybe I'm in the second last clue or something here and this is not quite long enough for for a foot yet so I will have to put something extra in before I do the uh, do the toe but yeah these are my socks in process quite fun I think but yeah I should try and finish those off at some point so um, yeah, so that I can yeah just forget about them and start wearing them. Um, okay, so the needles that I used for that was 2.5 mil needles. Um, and it was all fingering weight sock yarn. And I usually use 2.25 mil needles for that. But I thought that because it's um, color work that I should take a little bit uh, larger needles. And I started with 68 stitches. Um, for the same reason because it's color work so that I can make sure that it actually fits me um, so yes um, then I will show you this one this is my newest uh, newest project and it's almost done um, yeah this was a super quick knit I actually knit these in three days um, but I'm just missing a thumb so I did again these fingerless mitts that I love so much uh, they're called beetle mitts and these are now for little Felix because Finn had ones and then of course Felix wanted one 
uh, a pair as well and it was my plan to make him but I just haven't ha I just hadn't started it so we went down um, down to Bridgetown for the weekend um, so I took the yarns with me and made these there um, so yeah I'm missing maybe max 10 rows of thumb so <laughs> that won't take long to finish and then just sew in the ends and these will be ready but what I've noticed, although I've done these exactly the same way as Finn's, so um, I've used the 2.75mm needles with this yarn from Lohittaren Luola or Knit Lops Lair. Uh, the base is called Ilmatar and it's this beautiful 50-50 merino silk, um, 550 meters per 100 grams, so it's um, fine fingering almost bordering on lace um, and the pattern is written for fingering wet yarn so um, it, yeah, it suits well for a smaller hand like that um, and this colorway is called Kekele and this one is called Halla Yö uh, but for some reason now because it's been a while since I made Finn's ones um, my gauge is looser so these ones are these are much bigger I could even wear them but that's okay Felix can wear them as well and his hand will grow so yeah lovely pitomis I did um, I didn't make as many repeats of the pattern for for this arm, arm oh, wrist bit <laughs> before the thumb because uh, otherwise it will just go too far for Felix it's it's annoying to use and then after the thumb I also did less repeats just so that it's not too big for him but one thumb to go and then the ends and these will be done haven't weighed them yet obviously because the thumbs missing but these don't take much much um, yarn at all or time for that matter so that's it then I have one of my favorites okay let's do this this one's been on hold for a while as well because it's in the stage where I have to follow a pattern so I haven't felt like that for a while, so that's why it's been hiding in the bag. Uh, but this one's not so exciting because this is the back bit. I should show it this way. But this is the Varma Pullover from Sari Nordlund. It's, um, it's a paid for pattern in Ravelry, but I got this as a thank you um, after test knitting her Daya socks. Um, so I got to choose uh, which pattern I like and I wanted this so this is the back it's supposed to be worn with the uh, wrong side out I am using a um, linen blend yarn from this Sunday's gone to lean and this one is 53% cotton 33% viscose and 14% linen um, and it's 440 gram, uh, 440 meters per 100 grams so it's a little bit thinner yarn than fingering weight and I I believe the pattern is written for tuku wool and um, tuku wool and a cotton linen viscose blend yarn um, they act a bit differently so I'm not entirely happy with how this knit looks because yeah there are some looser rolls and everything but really who cares I will still love this and wear this for sure and then so obviously this is knitted in uh, in 
like separate parts, how do you say it? And uh, then sew them together. So I've started the front. This is the front. And it's got this beautiful cable pattern in the middle. So this is where I have to follow the chart and um, I just didn't feel like it, so it's been on, on hold for a bit. So I'll have to make this front bit and then I think I will leave it sleeveless so that I can wear it year round with or without a cardigan. So uh, this will be awesome for work and, and with nice skirts. So really looking forward to finishing this. I am using 3 mil needles, uh, chai gulls, and I am knitting the size small. I read my Ravelry notes just before I started podcasting and I, I confused myself. I had put in there that I'm, because of the gauge issues, um, I will knit a size large to get size medium and then I think I think I knitted my actual um, swatch much much tighter than what I started to knit when I started to knit the actual piece so then I've changed and I've started to make the size small so I actually should have skipped the whole swatch bit and just started to knit and see how I go because clearly it just confused me at the start and now so there's a lesson for you do not do the swatches but yeah that's over halfway done so we'll probably get there some at some point and yes um oh if somebody's interested in the in the colorway of of the yarn i'm using it is um color three five double one really pretty powder powder pink and now we're on to my last work in progress. This is a pretty new one as well. Living in my camping bear bag. Um, I've made one, one of these shawls before. I showed it last in the last episode, I think. I sent it to mum. And it was made from cotton, cotton acrylic blend or something. Um, so this is the Suburban Wrap by Hohi Locatelli, a paid for pattern in Ravelry. Um, and it's this, okay. it's like a scarf shaped, well, maybe it's a wrap shaped wrap. Um, with this arrow bits at the at the start and at the finish so it's going like this but I've decided to make this out of lace lace weight yarn so this is made out of um, drops lace mum again mum sent me these uh, from Finland um, Okay, where can I tell you what it is? Okay, so 70% alpaca and 30% silk. And this is so nice and soft. It's ridiculous. And I think there's 400 meters. Yeah, 400 meters in 50 grams. Um, this pretty pink is color number 3112. And then I've got the gray. 010, uh, sorry, 0501 is the color. And then I've got the baby blue, uh, color number 8105. So these were the colors I had. And I thought that these would be pretty. Pretty together, and yeah, I didn't have a choice because I only had these. 
Um, and the needles I'm using are 3.75 mil chai gulls again. And um, yeah, this is so nice. It is so light, it's so soft. And yeah, this will be perfect when the weather, maybe when the weather cools down to something starting with a two, not a three or a four. So when we're in the mid twenties, uh, yeah, I'll probably be wearing this cause I can. So as you can see here, I've actually, the because the yarn is so thin and I'm using almost four mil needles, the, the knit is not so neat. So I wanted to um, have a look how it looks like when I finish it off a little bit more. So I just, um, I just steamed it uh, with a warm iron till about, I think I've done it until here now, yeah. So the last lace bits are just off the needles, uh, straight off the needles. But yeah, it, um, it looks much neater after it's been steamed a bit. And I think I will block this properly when it's finished. Or maybe not, maybe I don't have patience, maybe I'll just iron it. But yeah, um, this is almost done. So what's still missing is these stripes. There's about the same amount of stripes as here. Then there will be a um, pink eyelets. And then I believe it's just the rib. So I'm almost there almost there um, and now this is easy to do as well because I'm past the I'm past the lace uh, which was pretty easy to memorize because it's the same lace throughout the throughout the um, shawl but now it's just knits or pearls and a couple of increases and decreases and that's it so yeah that's it I can't wait to wear these and um, that was all my whips and now I've got some plans for after I finish this that's why I'm trying to get this done as soon as possible so that I can start new ones um, I won't go too much into them, but I've been thinking I want to make more jumpers or tops for myself. So I've been thinking about these two patterns. So renun ren renunculus, is that how you say it? Renunculus. Um, it was like a Japanese name. Uh, the designer let me just have a quick look but that was one um, it's like this one size pattern and depending on the yarn that you use and the needles you um, you can use all all weights of yarn and it's a really really boxy loose uh, pattern I'm sure everybody knows it I just can't uh, remember the Okay, where's my cute? Midori Heroes is the, um, the designer. So I've got an idea of some stash yarn that I have um, that I will use for it. Um, just a fingering weight yarn and make it a little bit, not that boxy, more fitted. But that's one of my ideas. I might not do that first. I might do the other one first because um, I'm planning to use a um, planning to use the uh, whirl that I've got, the blue and white whirl for this one. So it would be uh, cotton and better to use at this time of the year. So uh, um, this one is. Isabel Kramer's Arwen. So I'm thinking about making it in that um, short sleeve out of the cotton. 
and that's the one that I'm going to cast on straight away when I get my my wrap ready um, and that's my big plan um, otherwise um, we are back to normal or our new normal schedule I guess um, Felix has started kindy now so he's going to big school two or three days a week and then daycare a couple of days and I've started to work four days a week I was supposed to be working today but we're having a day off but every other Friday I will have a day off without any kids in the house so every fortnight on a Friday I would have an opportunity to actually um, do my podcast I'm not making any promises and I've got no idea I don't think that's um, doable to do a podcast every two weeks but one can only try huh and I've been also thinking that should I be making some episodes in Finnish as well I I I'm getting these urges that I want to speak Finnish as well so let's see I might do that um, but um, would you like that? Is there anyone who would like to um, watch my Finnish, Finnish episodes? Or is there somebody who would not want me to do that? Let me know. I'm still thinking. But I've been, I've been filming way too long again. This is going to take forever to uh, upload onto YouTube. So I'll wrap it up. Um, I'm really happy if anyone found me after such a long break um, but yeah hopefully we'll see see you soon again all right bye